got the Portland Trailblazers, Jailblazers as they were known back in the day. Uh, taking myself back, they are getting eight points against the Chicago Bulls. Uh, Blazers plus two seventy on the money line. Total sitting at two thirteen and a half for me. I, I like uh, the Blazers getting eight points here, t- mostly just because. In what world uh, does this Bulls team deserve to be favored by eight points? Both teams are really banged up, but again, Portland's getting eight points. Uh, Kobe White is doubtful. Alex Caruso questionable, and Blazers have kind of been. I, I think the the market is underrating them. They've been they've been catching I think way too many points as an underdog, uh, and they're seven and three against the spread the last ten. Uh, meanwhile, Bulls straight up three and seven over their uh, last ten games at home. So it's not like Bulls have been dominating at home. I, I I'm I, both teams kind of play a slow pace. Um, I, I don't expect this to be a really quote unquote pretty game, but uh, this feels like a scrap it out kind of, you know, gritty game and eight points is going to go a long way, uh, in my mind. And, you know, Blazers have, you know, they beat the Raptors recently. They beat the Hawks. Like they're not, um, I don't know. They, to me, they're just not this complete bottom feeder that you would give eight points. I just, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around and I get it. The Blazers are also banged up, but, um, I don't know. I think they're. I think they're maybe overrating that Bulls win against the Wizards. I, I. I'm just racking my head as to thinking why the Bulls should be laying eight points. I'm going to take the uh, Blazers and the eight. Uh, Shark, how say you? Yeah, complete alignment here. First official for me, a collab with Sean, and happy to say it. We like Portland here, plus eight. Uh, seven now, eight, eight, eight and a half. I'm sorry, I'm unfamiliar with the line. It's been moving all over the place as we get into this Monday. But Portland really performs great on the road at the Eastern Conference. Six and two ATS over a big sample. And I think even more importantly, they're four and zero ATS at the Central Division. They beat Indiana outright on the road. They also beat Cleveland outright in this position. And they only lost by six at Milwaukee. So to give you a snapshot of how competitive they are, those three teams are far better than Chicago. And they, uh, Portland is coming off a blowout loss at the West. They did get beat by margin on Saturday at the Pelicans. The only other time this year they took a margin loss at the West and stayed on the road going to the East. It was Sunday, January 7th. They did beat Brooklyn outright in overtime on a very similar figure, plus nine. And you mentioned it, Chicago at home, just kind of sketchy. Chicago did start six and one or six, one and one ATS against the West, which is just way too hot. They are two and four since they're coming down. They're in the last game before they go on the road. They are six, eight and one at home in the final game before traveling. So if they're traveling next, They don't perform great in this spot. And they have performed great against the Blazers in recent history. 4-0 straight up in ATS, last four against Portland. And the line is scaling down, Sean. You said, you know, what's the line? Well, Chicago did lay seven points in Portland on January 28th and win the game by eight points. So seven road should come up to about 10 or 11 home. Seven and a half is actually notably short. I have this game graded to be with uh, inside of five points tonight. Take the Blazers here at seven or eight. This should cash pretty easily, in my opinion. Yeah, and, and without um, and again, assuming uh, assuming Kobe White is out, I I think that really has a big impact on their offense. And then Caruso, if he doesn't play, uh, this line's gonna I, I think would end up dropping actually a little bit off that because he does a lot for them. Uh, Junior, how say you? Any thoughts on Blazers at Bulls? No, not really. I understand why you guys are on this. I just think the Bulls are such a weird team to try and cap. Um, and I'll tell you what, the thing that works in your guys' favor for this play is that uh, their starters play like th- almost 35 minutes a game. It's kind of insane um, how, many, how many minutes those guys play. And the rest of their bench guys barely play 15 minutes. So if, you, if Kobe White, if even one of Kobe White or – Uh, Caruso is out, that's going to put them at a huge disadvantage because now you're putting guys into the lineup and asking them to play minutes when, you know, for the majority of the season, they've really not been doing that, especially uh, since the All-Star break when they've started to improve uh, as a team. So uh, Chicago's going to have some serious problems uh, if one of those backcourt players are out because, again, they don't have literally anyone off the bench that they could trust with minutes. Uh, so that kind of negates whatever you might think of the Portland lineup in terms of them being back, uh, bagged up 
Eight points, again, I'll say this all the time, that's reserved for the elites. We clearly know Chicago's not one yeah. of those. As bad as, Port as bad as Portland is, they should be able to hang around. So for me, it would be Portland uh, plus the points or nothing. Yeah, and I wouldn't, I mean, the Blazers stealing a game here in Chicago wouldn't shock me either. So money line uh, could be a fun little sprinkle. But lock it up for Shark and myself on the Blazers plus eight.